one, two, level check. <clears throat> one, two, levels, let's do it. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the first 30 days of a cut. Why 30? Two reasons. First, because getting off to a good start is vitally important to the overall success of your diet. That's when you get your routines in place and start building momentum. If you get it wrong, it can be just annoying to rectify, mate. Less than ideal. Let's get it right from the start. That's better. Second, because after the first month or so, not much actually changes. By then, you're just going through the motions, making your gradual changes until you're done. After 30 days, you should really be in the repeat until reach desired leanness phase. And that's where I'm gonna try and get you today. Let's begin. We're actually gonna start 10 days before the cut with a maintenance testing phase. You can skip this and go straight to day one, but if you have the time, I think it's good practice. First, get an estimate of your caloric maintenance. This is the number of calories you need to maintain your weight. If you have experience tracking calories and your body weight, you might be confident guessing this. If not, use an online calculator. These aren't always particularly accurate, nor would your own estimate be, but that's why we're gonna spend 10 days testing it. From this day forward, you will track every single calorie you consume and you will take a body weight reading every day, first thing in the morning before food. Over the next 10 days, you will train and live normally. Do not do any extra activity beyond what you usually do. So if you usually lift three times and run once a week, keep doing that and only that. We want to get an idea of your caloric expenditure under normal circumstances because, and this is important, we want as much of your dieting phase as possible to be under relatively normal circumstances. Aside from getting some data on how your body responds to a particular number of calories, this period will also help your appetite acclimate a bit, particularly if you've recently been through a phase of being an absolute hog, which is what tends to instigate diets for a lot of people. Going from a calorie surplus straight into a deficit, probably not ideal for the hunger signals, so sometime around maintenance, whether you're going from a bulk to a cut, or vice versa, is always a good idea in my view. Day one, first, plot your body weight readings for the last 10 days and draw a line of best fit to check for a trend. There's some GCSE math stuff, man. Don't just look at the first and last readings because there is always natural fluctuation. You do not need to have nailed your maintenance calories precisely on the very first try because you can still draw conclusions. If your weight is generally steady or slightly decreasing, take 15% off your calories and this will be your new intake. If it's slightly increasing, take 20% off. And if it's doing anything more than moving slightly in either direction, plus or minus another 5% onto each of those limits. So we should now have a number that's roughly 15% below our caloric maintenance. And this is where we'll stick for the next 10 days. But before we move on, there's still more to do today. Next, take some photos or a video of your physique. This is a less scientific way of tracking progress, but most people are getting leaner, either partly or entirely because they want to alter their appearance. And if that's the goal, then surely it should also be a means of gauging progress towards it. Sometimes you'll see some progress in the numbers, but not in the mirror. And sometimes you'll see progress in the mirror, but not in the numbers. It's helpful to have both. Finally, if if you aren't already tracking your lifts, start now. I'd recommend doing this all the time anyway, but it's arguably even more pertinent when you're dieting because you need incentive to keep on trying to improve your lifts. The idea that strength loss is this inevitable part of fat loss is wildly exaggerated. Not wholly untrue, but for the most part, massively exaggerated for most people. And I think it can become a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So my advice is don't assume anything. Just keep training as normal, keep trying to progress and you might surprise yourself. Over the next 10 days, you are again not to add any extra activity beyond what you normally do. We wanna test this deficit under the same conditions as we tested maintenance. So apart from calories, nothing changes. Day 10. On day 10, you're gonna check your bicep up in the second angle. On day 10, you're gonna take your body weight readings for the past 10 days and then you're gonna ignore the first three. Typically, weight loss happens really quickly in the first few days because a reduction in carbs causes a reduction in glycogen and water retention, but this isn't in indicative of actual fat loss. So we'll just look at the previous seven days. Over this seven days, you want to be observing a total weight loss of 0.5 to 1% of your body weight, ideally towards the higher end of that scale. If you are there, you don't need to do anything. Carry on, I'll see you in a week, or in like a few seconds, but you know what I mean? I'm doing the thing as if we're going through it together. If you're below 0.5% body weight, reduce your calories by another five to 10% and then carry on as normal. At this point, still no extra activity or cardio beyond what you usually do. For all but the most sedentary of people, you should be able to achieve some weight loss early on solely with a reduction in calories and a fairly tame one at that. Before we get to the next stage, let me just digress for a second about training. Over the course of a cut, 
you're really trying to track and manage three core variables calorie intake, your body weight, and your overall calorie expenditure. You adjust these in order to change this. Although your weight training will contribute towards your calorie expenditure, it's not a variable as such because it should not vary. There is no bulking program or cutting program. There is no training program that specifically builds mass or improves muscle definition. There are just better and worse ways of building muscle. With respect to hypertrophy, it's very black and white. You train to gain muscle at all times. So you don't need to start a new program or change training split. Just continue exactly as you were, following the same plan, applying progressive overload, focus on completing your weekly volume entirely independently of what's going on outside of the gym or in the kitchen or anywhere else. Day 17. By this point, we should have a solid two and a half weeks in the bag and by design, it should have been quite comfortable. You should have seen some gradual but steady weight loss and you should have a good idea of how many calories you need to consume to lose weight at your current activity levels. Assuming weight loss continued on track, this is the point at which you're gonna start adding small amounts of extra activity. And I'm using the term activity as opposed to cardio because I think the best option, if you have the time, is walking, which I wouldn't count as cardio unless you're an actual walrus. It's easy to track walking via your daily step count and it comes with virtually zero recovery costs so it won't impact the rest of your training. If you don't have the time to go for a walk every day, you can do something more intense, but the idea here is that you should be starting out with a very small amount, something that you are confident you can stick to even if you happen to have a particularly busy week because this is your new base level activity that you'll build on further down the line. I'd aim for an average of 100 to 150 calories a day or 700 to 1,000-ish calories a week as a guide, but you can do a bit more or less if you have or don't have the time. This won't hugely impact your rate of weight loss, but it will give it an extra nudge without any major inconvenience to your schedule. And importantly, it should now have you approaching the limit of what I'd call comfortable changes. We've reduced calories, but not by so much as to feel hunger if we make good food choices. And we've increased activity, but not by so much as to feel any real physical toll. These are what I'd consider to be the easy changes, the free money, the largely unnoticeable adjustments. And if you plan on sticking to a cut and being successful with it long-term, it's crucial that you maximize these easy changes before making things difficult for yourself. A quote I like to live by is, why do hard things when easy things are easier? Generally just more palatable and nice and good. Not a bit of shit like hard things. If you do use that quote anyway, I expect attribution. Day 24, you've now spent another week on the same calories, but with slightly increased activity levels. This is a good time to take another set of pictures because there should be some visual difference by now. Hopefully weight loss has continued and you are still in the 0.5 to 1% weight loss per week range. If so, carry on as normal. If not, this is the point where you need to start making choices. And that choice is, what will I find more bearable? Reducing calories, increasing my activity, or some combination of both? That's a question you'll now have to ask yourself every time your weight loss drops out of that range, which you'll assess at the end of each week. I think at the very beginning of a cut, the answer is usually reducing calories, but as they get lower, that shifts more towards increasing activity because we are genetically wired to find hunger rather unpleasant, so unpleasant in fact that we'd often rather walk up like fake stairs for an hour rather than endure it. I mean, they are technically real stairs, but they just don't go anywhere, do you know what I mean? It's like a bad dream, innit, a stairmaster. Anyway, when you do four below 0.5% body weight loss per week, you wanna take between five and 10% off your total calorie balance, depending on how far below it you are. Let's say you're currently on 2,500 calories and you wanna reduce by 5%. You could simply consume 125 calories fewer each day. You could do an extra 125 calories worth of activity. You could make that up with a combination, burn an extra 50 and consume 75 fewer. Whilst it is more straightforward to track this every day, you'll get the same results if you just make this an average. So you could do extra cardio sessions just a few times a week rather than doing small ones each day. Day 30, all right, you're a month in thus far. Calories haven't been too low and activity hasn't been too high. So you should have been able to get through your first month without too much general hardship. If that felt like a real slog, if you're suffering, about to film a red nose day appeal for yourself, making 
dramatic captions on Instagram, you probably went too hard too soon, right? Remember, we keep things as easy as possible for as long as possible. Now, at some point, hunger will become something you have to manage more consciously, and we want to get ahead of any potential obstacles. So I think this is a good time to start introducing refeed days slash cheat meals. Here, the general rule is, whatever you can get away with while still making progress. As the cut gets harder, you'll probably need to increase the frequency of these to help keep those urges at bay and maintain overall adherence. I'd start with once every two weeks, then maybe once every 10 days, then eventually once a week if you can get away with it and if you need to. This will cause fluctuations in your day-to-day -day body weight, which is why it's important to keep looking at the trend and not the individual numbers. So now you're at a point where you are simply repeating processes, taking body weight readings, you could probably drop down to every other day at this point if you wanted to, and then when your average weekly weight loss drops out of the goal range, you're reducing calories, increased activity, or both. Implement refeed days as often as you need to, provided you stay on track. Repeat until reach desired leanness. Now, there are, of course, different ways to approach things. When dieting, you have to strike a balance between short-term and long-term struggles. You can lose weight faster, increasing the daily struggle, but reducing the total amount of time you have to diet for, or you can lose weight very gradually, making things much more manageable on a daily basis, but elongating the total length of the cut. Personally, I prefer the second option because aside from studies that back it up, I've noticed in myself quite a significant difference in the amount of muscle mass that I hold on to when doing it slowly. So as always, plan ahead, give yourself plenty of time. Slow and steady wins the race. Joey Delaney is my hero! <laughs> <laughs>